Today we're going to get into a John Carpenter film, one that was considered lost for many years. Let's get into it. Welcome back to my channel. Hope you're all doing well out there. Today we're going to talk about a movie from one of the horror masters, John Carpenter, my favorite horror filmmaker, one of my favorite filmmakers, period, that was considered lost for two decades. And we're going to talk about it in a second. Before we get started, like, comment, subscribe, join me here. Great, would appreciate that. Quick little channel update. This will be my last video until after the Labor Day holiday. I'll return after Labor Day Monday. Uh, me and Dale underscore A from the Bat and Spider podcast. By the way, if you've never listened to those guys, search them out in your favorite podcast player and check those guys out. Those guys are awesome. We are making a pilgrimage back to my home territory of Pennsylvania, and we're going to go to Camp Blood weekend at the Mahoning Drive-In. So if you're planning on attending the Mahoning Drive-In for Camp Blood, we will be there Friday night for Friday 13th Part 3, Graduation Day, and Blood Rage, and Larry Zerner to play Shelly in Friday 13th Part 3 is going to be there. I'm looking forward to meeting him as well. So if you're there, if you see us, say hi. I'm much looking forward to that pilgrimage back to my home territory and going back to the Mahoning Drive-In for the first time since the mid-90s. So yeah, very excited about that. But uh, yeah, I want to wish everybody up front have a great Labor Day weekend. Now we're going to talk about that film right there, Someone's Watching Me. This aired on NBC November 29th of 1978. It's an hour and 37 minutes long, and this was written and directed by John Carpenter. Carpenter was coming off Assault in Precinct 13. He kind of filmed this and Halloween back to back. Halloween beat this one released, but this one came out shortly after that. And after this, he went on to do Elvis and then the fog and escape from New York and the thing and so on and so forth. Now in this film, we got Lauren Hutton as Lee Michaels. She is our main character. She is pretty much, this is her film. She's in every, just about every frame of this TV movie. Um, David Burney plays Paul. She, he becomes a love interest throughout this film for Lee. Adrian Barbeau, the great Adrian Barbeau plays Sophie. And this is where her and John Carpenter met. They would marry a year or two later after this. Charles Cyphers, who was a Carpenter regular around this time, plays Gary Hunt, a detective with the Los Angeles Police Department. And Len Lusser is in this film. And in order to bring him up, because you're probably saying, who the hell's that? He was Uncle Leo on Seinfeld, and he has a small role in this film as well. Now, this film was all shot in and around Los Angeles, mostly on sound stages at Warner Brothers, but they did, did a few days of location shooting. Um, this is a pretty good special edition Blu-ray from Scream Factory. This film, had been, before we get into it, this film was considered lost for like two decades. Back then, when a TV movie came out, sometimes they would rerun them, but sometimes you wouldn't see them. And this movie did not get a VHS release in the U.S. So once it aired, nobody really saw it unless they happened to record it back then, which not many people had a VCR or a Betamax player back then. They were very expensive. In Europe, it did get a VHS release, but in America, it took almost a little over two decades for it to get a VHS release. And then finally, Scream Factory cleaned it up and the transfer is really nice. And there's some good special features on there. I just watched this last night. I've actually, this is the one Carpenter film I've never seen before. Um, I've always been curious about it. I knew of it because I'm a huge John Carpenter fan, but I've never seen it. And they were having a sale on Amazon for that. So I picked it up and checked it out last night. And uh, we're gonna talk about it right now. Lauren Hutton, is Lee moves into LA. She used to work for a TV station and she applies for a job. She gets this apartment, this really nice apartment building, and she goes for a job interview at this TV station and she ends up becoming a director at that TV station. This is where we meet Adrian Barbeau, who is her assistant. And Adrian Barbeau's great here. She doesn't get a lot of screen time, maybe 10 minutes total. Um, the one other notable thing about Adrian Barbeau's character is that she's a lesbian, and this was 78. This was something that really wasn't on TV all that much, although they don't, they, they talk about it a little bit. They don't really dwell on it all that much. And suddenly, Lee is starting to get phone calls, and then presents start showing up. And in the meantime, she meets Paul at a bar, and they strike a good, get a good relationship going, and they become very intimate. But the thing, her mail, her presents keep getting sent to her, the frequency increases. The phone calls increase. It's getting more creepy. He's sent this guy is sending these letters to her, leaving them on taped on her door. Her lighting in her apartment gets dim and goes back on, and all this crazy stuff starts happening. And as it escalates, she gets more concerned. And finally, Paul takes her to talk to a friend in the Los Angeles Police Department, Gary Hunt, who was played by the great Charles Cyphers, who's fabulous here. But there's not much they can do. They don't know what the guy looks like. He hasn't made a threat yet. 
finally they track down this apartment building across the way they think they find out who did it because lee had seen this guy in the laundry room because he left a note saying i'll meet you in the garage and that's the guy who played uncle leo in seinfeld he gets taken away by the cops but they can't arrest him because there's no proof and he ends up moving out of the city and back to iowa and then finally we figure out who the real stalker is and his plan is to kill her or make it look like suicide because he's done this to three other young women before this and here we find out he's an inspector for the city that goes and inspects these apartment buildings and he has all the keys and he has all the equipment to pull off what he's doing they track his, Ali tracks his house down she finds all the equipment to record her and this typing machine to type the letters and when she goes back to her apartment because she's supposed to meet um, Paul at the police department to talk to Hunt again about this he is there and he's messing with her and there's a final confrontation and then he ends up going over out the window and gets killed in the street and that's pretty much the end of someone's watching me. Now you can definitely tell, come on, I love Assault in Precinct 13. Now this is Carpenter is used to shooting an anamorphic widescreen. Here he's shooting in the TV format which he still is able to pull some style out of. Most TV movies don't have a lot of style or suspense. Carpenter does milk it for as much suspense as he can. Matter of fact, back in the 70s and early 80s, there was some really good TV movies made. I miss TV, good TV movie. And this is a good pot boiler suspense thriller. It's not really a horror movie, but we'll consider it horror because it comes from one of the masters of horror. But it's a really well done movie. Carpenter does nice lighting here, nice cams, you know, the nice fluid camera moves that Carpenter is so known for. He does ratchet up the tension as it goes along. There's no gore. You don't see no blood. It's just about the creep factor and ratcheting up the suspense until we get that finale where the stalker gets thrown out the window because of their struggle, and that's the end of the film. Um, Lauren Hutton's fabulous here. She really is. Now, I always remember her from Once Bitten with Jim Carrey. Um, in that movie, I haven't seen it in a while, but I remember watching it as a kid. Um, she's really good here. I mean, it's her film. She's in almost every frame of this film. The movie is literally hers. It rests on her shoulders and how well she portrays this character and the different stages she goes through. And she's not a perfect character. She has her quirks. She likes to talk to herself. And when she meets Paul, she, like, she likes to make up stories. And she uses them as a joke. And then she kind of recants and says, oh, no, 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 that's true. I'm just joking around. And she likes to joke around. So she's not a, and she's had some tragedy in her life. She's not a perfect person. She's growing and she's learning and she's just new to town. Um, and she's really great here. Lauren Hutton really does a, gives a really great performance here. And like I said, the film rests upon her capable shoulders here. Um, I've never been, you know, I'm not really super familiar with Lauren Hutton's work besides Once Bitten and maybe a couple other films. But she is really good here, it's the center of this story. Adrienne Barbeau is always a pleasure to see. And again, like I said, this is where her and Carpenter met. They married a year or two later. Charles Cyphers is great. He worked with Carpenter a lot back then. He was in Salt and Priest in 13. This, the Elvis TV movie that Kurt Russell starred in. He was in The Fog. He was in Escape from New York. And then him and Carpenter's kind of relationship. Not that they still don't know each other. They stopped working together after that. But so he had a nice long run working with Carpenter. And he's great here as this detective. The whole cast is well good here. This isn't a whodunit in the sense of, yes, we're curious of who's doing this to her. But usually in a true whodunit like Scream or that, it usually comes down to a character we've met. In this movie, the character ends up being the stalker. We don't even know what he looks like until we see him at the end of the film. We have not seen him up until that final confrontation. So in that respect, it's more about there's this creeper out there stalking this woman. There's some mystery to it about where he actually lives. You know, there's like the guy who plays Uncle Leo gets accused of it. It wasn't him, but he ends up having to leave town because now everybody thinks he's a creeper. And then they think it's this other apartment, which it truly was. This guy was just using that apartment because that guy was out of town. He had the keys to use it and it overlooked her apartment. So he was using her apartment. That's not where he lived. So really, it's not a true whodunit. So it's more about just the investigation her getting more and more stressed about what's going on. And even at, for a couple of moments, they actually play with that. It might be all in her head, which Carpenter's a nice job giving no, that misdirection. It goes on for a little bit where you actually, I even thought for a moment, maybe she is just fucking crazy. But that's not the case really is a creeper out there stalking her and just torturing this woman. And uh, he does plan on killing her. Now, like I said in the beginning, this was considered the one long uh, lost John Carpenter film for about 20 some years before it actually got released on VHS. Um, it was released in Europe, but not here. So you couldn't rent this again. Like back then, like the same thing with Dark Knight of Scarecrow. It's a great TV movie, especially for Halloween. 
but you couldn't watch that for years. I had seen it on a rerun at some point. I couldn't even tell you. I was really young until that Blu-ray got, that special edition Blu-ray got released. That's the same with this. I never got to see it. I love Carpenter. I've seen all of his work except for this film. I finally got to rectify that last night. And it's a good little thriller. Carpenter does really well here. Um, the script was originally intended to be a theatrical movie. Obviously ended up being a TV movie. Richard Colbert um, produced this film. He would produce the Salem's Lot remake um, with Toby Hooper. And then him and John Carpenter would re-team again for Christine after John Carpenter got fired off a of Firestarter, which thank God he did because we got that awesome movie, Christine. But this is just, a, originally the original working title was High Rise, they changed it to Someone's Watching Me. This is a really good TV movie. There's some good suspense, there's some good camera work, cons even considering John Carpenter's not working with what he's used to, the widescreen Panavision. But it's a really well done movie, it's well acted, there's some really good suspense here. I would give this an 8.5 out of 10. I really thoroughly enjoyed it. It takes its time. And Carpenter slowly ratchets up the tension, but it's really well done. I enjoyed myself watching this. It's a movie I will revisit often, like most of Carpenter's filmography. So yeah, eight and a half out of ten for someone's watching me. Have you ever had a chance to see this film? Leave a comment down below. Let me know. Hit the thumbs up and subscribe button. Share it. It's really great. We'd appreciate that. I will see you after Labor Day weekend. And if you're at Camp Blood on Friday, if you see me or Dale underscore A, come by and say hi. I would love to have a conversation with you. But until next time, bye.